Welcome to the Respiratory Care Advising Session. Students curious about our program can find much information within the session. Students wanting to apply to the program must view the video in its entirety for a successful application to the program. Once you've viewed the video, please complete the Advising Documentation form with the requested student information. Without doing this, your application will not be able to be ranked for acceptance into the program. My name is Barbara Coe and I am Chair of the program. Please find my contact information here and feel free to reach out to me for questions and clarifications you may have. So why have a mandatory advising session? We want to make sure that before applying to the respiratory care program, you know what a respiratory care practitioner does, how to apply to the program, what the structure of the program is, or the program overview, and what to expect following graduation, and also what our program outcomes have been. Respiratory therapists take care of patients of all stages of life, from premature delivery to palliative care for the elderly. Most of the job opportunities for RT are in acute care facilities like hospitals. In particular, when an institution expands its ED or increases to a trauma one level, or perhaps a level three nursery status, more respiratory therapists are needed. And doesn't that make sense? We are in those units to maintain patient airway. I'd like to offer up here that respiratory care works with all kinds of patients, not just those with lung disease. There are many reasons why somebody with normal lung function might need us. Consider the patient who had a heart attack, a stroke, narcotic overdose, or a car accident. All of these patients may have normal lungs, but may not be breathing or breathing well enough to maintain their health. Until the illness is reversed, RTs assist in the intubation and I'd like to add in some facilities actually are trained to intubate. We manage the mechanical ventilator, view the chest x-ray films, view labs, and create and execute patient care plans for best outcomes. We administer all inhaled gases and medications, provide therapies to maintain clear airways. We perform arterial punctures to check for an adequate lung function. This is different than what phlebotomy or even nursing does. We will go into the artery rather than a vein to find levels of carbon dioxide, which tells us about ventilation and acid base status. And then of course, oxygen to, that reflects the patient's oxygenation. We also are present for all resuscitation efforts in the hospital outside the OR. You might know these as, as codes. This could be on the floor, in the ICU, in the ED, or even the cafeteria or the hallway. RT is also part of the rapid response team within the hospital. We manage patients on mechanical ventilators, which is a major part of our job. For this reason, much of what therapists do in the ICU and in the ED as management of airway is always critical to patient care. We transport mechanically ventilated patients to departments outside the ICU, such as CT or MRI. We also are part of the transport team when a mechanically ventilated, high-risk patient needs to be transferred to another facility. This could be by ambulance or, far enough away, by helicopter. We test patient lung function. Pulmonary diagnostics is a specialty credential for therapists that measure the, the patient lung function. We work with patients to improve the quality of life with pulmonary rehabilitation exercises. We educate patients with lung disease such as asthma and COPD on how to manage their diseases. And finally, we screen patients for sleep disordered breathing such as sleep apnea. While certainly most of the job opportunities for respiratory or within acute care settings like hospitals, other opportunities do exist. Home care is a growing field and often in need of therapists to deliver and maintain oxygen and breathing equipment in patients' homes. You might work in the private sector, selling the equipment, such as mechanical ventilators to department heads, 
for the staff to use. Lastly, you might work with a specific pulmonologist in an outpatient setting, providing testing and education for clinic patients such as asthma, emphysema, cystic fibrosis, interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, to name a few patient populations. The U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics from May 2019 reports the median annual wage for RT to be a little over $61,000 a year with an hourly rate of $29.48. This is also a field of faster than average growth, which is anticipated to be 19% between 2019 and 2029. Now, if any of that sounded interesting to you, we would like for you to know the process for a successful application. All of the items you see here are mandatory and will be discussed one at a time. First, the submission of the online advising form. Next, I'll discuss the required math and science coursework needed to apply, the GPA requirement, our communications placing testing requirement, and lastly, the submission of the residency verification form. Because the video gives critical information that students need to know about our program, it's mandated that prospective students view the online session in its entirety. Questions like name, COD, ID number, if you have one, email, phone, and address will be requested of you within the form. Collection of the information is necessary for the division office, and with your permission, for follow-up conversations with our faculty for specifics about the application process unique to your situation. All prospective students wanting to apply to the program must have this advising documentation form submitted within 12 months prior to the application deadline. For prerequisite coursework, you will need to have completed a college-level three-credit hour math that is math 1102 or higher. You will need to have a B or higher in that class and it should be within the last seven years of the application deadline, meaning completion of the math course would have to be on or after June 16, 2014. The reason that we have this time limitation is to make certain that our students entering the program have current enough math skills to succeed if you do not have a math class that fits this description, we recommend Math 1102, which is Math for Health Sciences. If you do happen to have a math class, but it's more than seven years old, it's not necessary to take another one. You can simply sit for the Alex math placement and score a 30 or more, as long as it's taken within the application period. Find out more about scheduling this test in our admission packet. If you score equal to or greater than 30, we will be able to accept your previous math course that met criteria and rank your application with the grade you received in that class. The second coursework that is needed for a successful application is the completion of a college level or credit hour course in science, which can be any anatomy and physiology, chemistry, or biology which excludes Biology 1110, Environmental Biology. You must have received a grade of B or higher, and the course must have had a lab component. Of note, there's no time frame for the science class, so if there's a class that fits this description in your transcripts, it will be honored. A cumulative GPA average of at least 2.75 for general education classes only. So it's not every class you've ever taken. It's just the GPA of the courses you see on this slide. While you only need Gen Ed's math and science to apply to the program, you will need all of these to graduate from COD and secure your AAS or Associates of Applied Science degree. It's possible to take these concurrently with your respiratory coursework but all must be finished before your last semester in the program. You will not be allowed to sit for the national boards without completion of not only the respiratory coursework, but also all of the general education requirements as well. 
If you have coursework outside of COD, please be sure to submit all transcripts to the Office of Student Records. Because RTs are part of a critical care team that include many people, such as physicians, nurses, physical therapy, radiology, etc., communication skills must be proficient. All students, even if you hold an advanced degree in English, must complete the college's placement tests for reading and writing. We are hoping that students will have access to the Big Testing Center to complete these placement tests prior to June. You may already have these tests completed. You can check your degree audit for the following. Placement tests taken at COD prior to April 2016 included compass testing and a Category 1 result in both reading and writing is required. Placement tests taken at COD after April 2016 included AccuPlacer testing. There are many of these tests. Our program requests AccuPlacer reading comprehension and AccuPlacer writing sentence skills, and students must secure a Category 1 in both. For ESL students, must include AccuPlacer reading skills, sentence meaning, language use, and listening. Students must have all of this testing and have scored 102 or higher on each test. Finally, the submission of the residency verification form is required. This must be filled out by all students, even if you live outside of District 502. You can find the hyperlink to the form in our admission packet here. Please know that we accept out-of-district students into respiratory. Do not let this stand in your way of applying. Because our program has out-of-district clinical sites, we may admit a maximum of 20% out-of-district applicants to the program. The 20% maximum policy would only apply to out-of-district applicants who do not have access to a respiratory program in the community college district in which they reside. Students from districts with a respiratory care program within their district would only be considered if there were open seats after all qualified candidates from in-district and out-of-district without programs were accepted. If there are insufficient numbers of qualified in-district applicants, the maximum percentage of out-of-district students accepted can be exceeded until the program achieves full enrollment with the approval of the Dean of Nursing and Health Sciences. Please know that you can apply to the program once your math, science, and placement testing is complete. Once I see that your application has been received, I'll personally reach out to confirm the rest of the requirements are completed before the deadline. Please know that you must be a COD student first before applying to the program. There is a $20 fee. Please know that if you have ever been a COD student at any time in the past, you still are one and you would not have to apply again, no matter how much time has passed since the previous class. Once you are a COD student, you will be issued a COD ID number and email. Please be mindful to keep both. Next, you will need to apply to the respiratory program specifically. There is a $50 non-refundable fee for the application. Step-by-step -step directions for the application are found in our respiratory care admission packet with on, within our homepage. Following a respiratory application, all communications will be through COD email only. Please know that you are able to link your COD email to a personal account. Acceptance letters are mailed in mid-July through COD email only. You will need to accept your seat in the program by returning a communication to administration. Once the acceptance of the seat is documented, you will be given directions on how to register for your classes which begin in August. Students who meet all criteria for the program but were not accepted, we accept up to 32 students in a cohort, will receive an alternate list email. 
I want everyone to know that I use my alternate list every year. If a student applies to the respiratory and say nursing program and is accepted into both programs, they may decide to accept the nursing seat and decline the respiratory seat. Once I get a declined seat, I offer it to the person next on the alternate list. Students who do not meet criteria for a successful application will receive a letter in the mail. Because our advising policy, this happens rarely. If you are offered a seat and accept, register for your fall classes as early as possible to ensure the sections of lab are secured that fit your schedule. Your acceptance letter will outline specs needed for a portable device. In the event to mimic your national board conditions, you will have instructors that choose to test online. Currently, the program is utilizing the software Exemplify for test integrity. Please know that the specs can change rapidly and include newer visions of technology. If you're going to purchase a device, I recommend waiting until you are accepted into the program. If purchasing a device is not possible and you do not own one, the program will attempt to secure a loaner device from an alternate source. Right For right now, please observe that Microsoft Surface or Chromebooks will not work. Once school starts in August, there are a few actions that need completion to get you ready for your clinical rotation. You will need to complete a health screening. Details of exactly what is needed in the screening are found as a hyperlink within the Respiratory Care Admission Packet found on our homepage. This includes that you are willing and able to accept an annual flu shot and requested vaccines. We won't be able to place you at a clinical site without this documentation, and you wouldn't be able to complete the program. You must pass a drug test at least annually and for cl some clinical sites prior to placement. Please know that while cannabis is legal, a positive test would cause removal from the program. In addition, all healthcare workers and student healthcare workers are required to undergo a criminal background check from a company provided by COD in order to work in a clinical setting. A student with a positive background check containing disqualifying conditions as defined by federal and state law will not be allowed to enter the clinical portion of the program, thus preventing the student from obtaining certification and or licensure. You must have health care insurance. For most students, you may be able to secure insurance through COD for the time of the program. Even if you already have a CPR card that is active when you enter the program, please know that you will undergo BLS training as part of one of your labs during the first semester. The instructor will sign off on skills that you have and work in teams similar to what you would find in the ED and on the floors during a code. For this reason, all students will be required to take BLS with their cohort in the first semester. You will also be asked to sign a professional conduct statement. The document can be found on our homepage under resources. I know the slide is busy, but I wanted to supply prospective students with the approximate cost of the program for the entire five semesters. Please realize that the tuition figure assumes an in-district and represents all respiratory coursework as well as gen eds. Now you may remember that you had to have math and science already completed to even apply to the program. If all of the gen eds are completed, which we recommend coming into the program if you can, you would only need the 46 respiratory course credits which will further reduce the cost needed to graduate. The following five slides contain an overview of the 46 credit hours in the program by semester, the names of the classes and the days when each meet, along with the number of lab and lecture hours are provided. Please do know that these schedules may change due to program needs.
The first semester is 16 credit hours, which we realize is a lot to ask of our students. The reason for doing this is so that we can get you into clinical rotation beginning the second semester of the program. This results in a total of 800 hours of very valuable hands-on clinical placement time. Should you have any gen eds to complete, this is not the semester to work those in. We will keep you busy enough with the courses you see on the slide. You will have a total of eight hours of lab and 13 of lecture each week. All students will attend lab to, or will attend lecture rather together as a cohort. The labs will be sectioned off for eight students in a lab to provide best possible student experience. Both lab and lecture begin as early as 7 a.m. All classes meet during the day, Monday through Friday, and when face-to-face, -face, meet on COD main campus. As a reminder, both lab and lecture begin at 7 a.m., just as your clinicals do. There are no weekend or evening classes. With the exception of your summer class, all coursework in the program will be a full 16-week semester. Please know that attendance is mandatory. Because the first semester is so demanding, I want to make certain students are set up to get enough assistance to succeed. Be able to arrange your outside commitments, including work and family, so that you can devote enough time to the coursework to maintain your seat in the program. This would mean that you have arranged your schedule to secure enough study time to maintain at least a 75% average in all of your classes. The Electronic Code of Federal Regulations, a government organization defining terms used by the Department of Education, identifies a credit hour as one hour of classroom or direct faculty instruction with a minimum of two hours of out-of-class student work each week. In the spring, your course load will drop significantly to five credit hours. Please be aware of the financial aid rules, as for some loans, the student must be in six credit hours to be able to secure the loan. If this describes the assistance you are intending to use, please make other arrangements for this semester and the following summer semester to cover off tuition and fees. Every Tuesday and Thursday, for the remainder of the program, you will be at clinical rotation. Clinical start as early as 6.30 a.m. and run for up to an entire 12-hour shift. Please make sure to have reliable transportation for all clinical placements. This will be your adult floor therapy rotation. In addition, you will meet on Monday for a three-hour lab and on Wednesday for a two-hour lecture. Friday is off. We are in school during the summer. Please once again note that the total credits are less than six for the semester. This is a mandatory 10-week session where, again, clinical rotation is Tuesday and Thursday, up to 12 hours each shift. This is your first ICU adult rotation. You will meet on Mondays for a three-hour lab and on Wednesdays for a three-hour lecture. Friday is off. When you return in the fall, you will have nine credit hours. Clinical rotation is Tuesday and Thursday, up to 12 hours each shift. This is your second ICU adult rotation. You will meet on Mondays for a two-hour lab and a three-hour lecture. Wednesdays, you will meet for a two-hour lab and a two-hour lecture. Friday is off. Your final semester is 12 credit hours with clinicals Monday through Friday around your coursework. So please note that there are no days off in this semester. Rotations include neonatal and pediatric ICU, as well as other specialty rotations such as pulmonary function, long-term care, pulmonary rehab, a doc office, and then a home care rotation. Coursework includes a Wednesday two-hour lab and two-hour lecture, 
and a Friday four-hour lecture, and online assignments with one hour of proctor testing weekly for your online net course, which is your board review. You will graduate from COD with an Associates of Applied Science degree, which will be the completion of all of your respiratory coursework, plus all of the required general education coursework. Again, you cannot sit for your national boards to become credentialed in respiratory care until graduation from COD, even if all of the program coursework is completed. For this reason, we recommend completion of the gen eds before admission into the program, if at all possible. Following graduation, you will sit for two national board exams. The first is the TMC, or Therapist Multiple Choice Exam. This is a three-hour multiple choice exam with 160 questions, of which 140 are scored. There are two cutoff scores. Passing the exam at the low cut, which is currently 86 out of 140, allows the student to secure the CRT credential. Passing at the high cut, currently 92 out of 140, also allows you the CRT credential, but also to be eligible to sit for the clinical simulation exam. The second exam, or clinical sims, is 22 branching logic patient care scenarios which include information gathering and decision making. Once the student passes this exam, they are awarded the RRT credential. The program prepares the student to pass at the RRT credential no more than a few weeks after graduation. Following credentialing, you will need to secure a state license for employment. There is no additional test, however, a fee is associated with your license. In Illinois, the state license is active for two years before renewing every odd year at the end of October and requires 24 hours of continuing education credits for each renewal. Our program is accredited by the Commission on Accreditation for Respiratory Care, or COAR. You can find three-year reporting period data for all accredited program outcomes on their website at www.coarc.com. Our current three-year data for 2017, 18, and 19 demonstrates an 85% retention rate. This includes students who left the program for failure to achieve minimum grade requirements, and ethical, professional, or behavioral violations of academic policies. Of note, it does not include students who left the program in good standing due to financial, medical, or family reasons, military deployment, a change in course study, or relocation. Our program enjoys a 94% pass rate at the high cut and a 79% for an RRT credential. Currently, 94% of our graduates find employment within 12 months of graduation and often have their positions lined up from our clinical partners immediately following credentialing and licensure. Please don't forget to submit the online advising form indicating that this necessary step for application to the program is completed. In addition, don't hesitate to reach out to one of the program's full-time faculty for questions and clarification. We welcome your application.